Let your knees cave in on squats to build your glutes. What's up guys, back with another educational video and this week we are talking about knee valgus or knee cave on squats. Is it bad for you? Is it good for you? Do you wanna do it if you wanna get big booty? But first, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment for the algorithm. So a study just got published that is going to get, uh, I think a lot of interest especially from people who have uh, made a following for themselves by espousing the virtues of you must have perfect form, whatever they deem perfect form as. For those of you guys who have followed me for a while, I've done a few videos on pain and injuries talking about how, you know, there is no one perfect form and actually form doesn't necessarily seem to predict the risk of injury. In fact, when they look at, uh, for example, say the rounding of the lower back in a deadlift, really weak to no association with injury risk, uh, especially in people who are used to deadlifting that way. And knee valgus or knee cave is something that kind of along the lines of lower back rounding is kind of ubiquitously thought to be bad. You shouldn't have knee cave. You should never let your knees come in. If you do, you're gonna blow out your knees. There's gonna be all kinds of problems. A new study looked at knee valgus and found some results that were quite interesting. So they had people squat on a force plate and they looked at the force at various different parts of their body and they found some interesting results. So when they had people squat with the cue of kind of knees out, they found greater activation of the adductor muscles, which isn't surprising. Uh, so those are your inner thigh muscles. But when they had people squat with knee valgus or let their knees cave in, they found that they got more glute activation, which seems to be counterintuitive because if you think about a lot of the movements that are used to build the glutes, it involves putting knees out. So if you think about abduction, where you're pushing away, that's used as a glute builder. A lot of people to build glutes will put bands around their knees and do wider squats. The problem with that line of thinking is you could squat without any weight and if you put bands around your knees and force your knees out, you will activate your glutes. But in a squat, you're not really putting that much tension on those glutes just by forcing your knees out. Now in a deep squat, you are getting a stretch on the glutes. So that was one surprising result. The other surprising result, or not really surprising I think to people who are really tuned up on pain literature and injuries is that the force on the knee, the authors concluded that it wasn't enough force to cause injury to the ACL or different parts of the knee. So many people will say, you know, with knee cave, you're risking tearing your ACL. I can only think of two cases of people tearing their ACLs on squats. And the reason they tore them was because they tore their quad at the bottom of a squat and then their legs collapsed and that velocity tore their ACL. If you think about how people usually tear their ACLs, most times it's an athlete planting their foot while they're trying to turn and it appears that that velocity and that force, it was what causes the rupture of the ACL. But I've never heard of anyone, maybe it's happened, but I've never heard of anyone straight up tearing an ACL on a squat. I mean, you've heard of, you know, patellar problem, patellar tendon problems, you maybe even a PCL problem, uh, meniscus, but not ACL. Interestingly, this information actually kind of tracks with a real world example. And a friend of mine, Leo Bavois, who is the 69 kilo world record holding squatter from France and Leah, who at 69 kilos, which is about 152 pounds, I wanna say, squats 225 kilos or 496 pounds. And she is coached by her boyfriend, Ben, who also does my game day handling for powerlifting. So Ben, hopefully you don't mind me saying this, Ben has said it himself, Leah has massive glutes. And one thing about Leah is when she squats, her knees valgus, they cave in. She has always squatted that way and she's never injured her knees. So what this paper suggests, I'm not saying people should squat with knee valgus. What it suggests is that people with really strong glutes may actually gravitate towards a bit more knee valgus because they're activating their glutes over their adductors. So if somebody has stronger glutes than they do adductors, perhaps 
a little bit of knee cave allows them to better utilize their glutes. So what I would say is if you don't knee cave naturally, then don't force it. Continue to squat the way you've been squatting. If you do knee cave, strengthen your glutes. If you're still knee caving, then it's not a glute weakness. Everybody's thought of this knee cave must be because your glutes are weak. And that's simply not true, especially based on some of the real world examples that we see. The other thing that's funny is if you look at Leah's videos, so many people say, you're gonna blow out your knees, you're gonna blow out your knees, you're gonna blow out your knees. Leah has dealt with hip pain, she's dealt with back pain. She's never injured her knees. Now, people will say, well, the hip and back pain is obviously just radiating from the knee. Uh, pseudoscientific garbage. There's no evidence to suggest that. Uh, show me a power lifter who's done it for to over 10 years who hasn't dealt with hip and back pain. Good luck. Again, I know people will straw man this, and I actually, I actually called Brett Contreras because Brett is much more read up on biomechanics than I am. And he is, without question, the world's leading expert on booties, on glutes. Brett knows how to build some big glutes, all right? You just look at the women that come out of his gym, and I mean, it may be a selection bias, but that man knows how to build a butt, all right? And he was not surprised by these results. And in fact, he thought that these results were right in line with some of his observations. And as far as the injury risk goes, try to understand if you have strong glutes and your knees naturally track inwards during a heavy squat, you are better off continuing to squat that way and let those tissues adapt to that versus trying to force yourself to squat with knees out and then when you get to a very heavy weight or a high intensity set, have your knees cave in because then you actually are risking increased risk of injury because those tissues may not be adapted to the same extent. A great example of this is I used to pull my sumo deadlifts with a straight back. If you go back and look at videos from me from say 2014, 2015, 2016, my back even my upper back was very straight when I deadlifted. Around 2019, I started changing how I deadlifted. And the reason I did was because I went through a lot of back injuries and back pain. And several times when I injured or aggravated my injuries on deadlift, which when I got to a heavy deadlift, I was under a lot of fatigue and my back started to round during the lift. So I started training it rounded. I started at a lighter weight, worked my way up, and now I'm hitting weights, rounded back deadlifting. I would say my lumbar is straight. My upper back is definitely rounded. I am hitting weights comparable to my top end weight. And I have dealt with far less back pain and far less back injuries over the last five years than I did the previous five years. And again, I'm an N of one, but I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that I let myself default to how I lifted when I got really heavy under fatiguing loads and I just trained that way. And so now those tissues have become adapted to it. Again, we got to do this because you are going to see the most straw man and false dichotomy arguments that you've ever seen in this comment section because people don't have brains and whatever brain cells they have left, they lose them when they see knee valgus or they see not perfect form. I am not saying you should knee valgus. I am simply saying that given if your glutes are strong enough and you naturally tend to knee valgus on a heavy squat, you are better off continuing to just squat that way and do all your sets that way. Shout out to Brett for helping me out uh, with that study. Shout out to Ben for coaching Leah to a world record squat and shout out to Leah for showing that you can have imperfect form not get injured and set world records. I'm out.